Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord and Jake Gordon. Happy March Madness Day to all of those who celebrate. But in the midst of all of that, the Falcons are still making moves. A couple of days ago, they re-signed Kayla McGarry to a three-year, $35 million deal. And Alex, you were spot on. Um, the market was not as hot as even the Falcons expected. It was reported that they thought they were probably going to lose them, but it wasn't that hot. He signs a very palatable deal at about $11 million a year, which for McGarry, like I said, 18, 20 million, kick rocks. 11 million, I think that's a fantastic deal. What are your thoughts on this deal, Alex? Um, it is a great deal for the Falcons, uh, especially, you know, I guess it depends on the structure. Uh, if it locks him in here for three years, I like it a little less, but even if you have to cut ties, $11 million per year, isn't that, you know, much to really, uh, handle, but if it's like a two year deal or something like that, really, uh, where they can just cut bait in the third year, I really like it. Um, he shouldn't be the long-term answer. Um, you know, Arthur Smith kind of has to call plays and prepare around Caleb McGarry. He accentuates his strength. You know, he's a great run blocker. Um, he's still not reliable in pass sets, but he rarely is asked to, you know, drop drop in pass sets for seven seconds alone on an island. Usually he has running back help, tight end help. You know, it could come from the inside with Chris Lindstrom. Uh, so Arthur Smith knows what he has out there at right tackle. And it's certainly not Tristan Wirfs or, you know, anyone like that who can just drop back and pass sets and, you know, hold his own against the best pass rushers in the league. Caleb McGarry's not that guy. He's a mauler in the run game, and that's what the Falcons want to do. They want to run the ball and play, uh, have play action off of it. And McGarry's perfect for that. And $11 million for a right tackle uh, in today's NFL, regardless of if you know he's below average in pass sets, is a good deal. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I was wrong on this. I thought his price was going to go up because he was the only guy left, and then that can create a bidding war. But I guess that didn't happen with him, and uh, I'm very happy. I think this is actually pretty fair for both sides, too, because, I mean, if, even if you look at McGarry, the franchise tag would have been about $17 million. He's coming off of one real good year of production. Uh, he had some injury troubles when he first got into the league, I think. Uh, I might be thinking of Lindstrom. Either way. But, yeah, I think it's a fair deal for both sides. Three years, I feel like that's a solid uh, a solid time frame, too. And it's if you do have to move on from it, which I don't really foresee uh, – it's a lot more palatable than something like Mike McGlinchey got, which is crazy. Which was crazy. Hang on. Let me address that really quick. Mike McGlinchey is not that much better than Kayla McGarry. If at all. He's been, he's been no, he, he's been more consistent and he is better in pass protection, but he's not what $7 million per year better. That that's ridiculous. Well, he was, he was, he's been better for his whole career. Like, especially when he was younger, he was really good when he first got into the league, but I think he had a kind of a rocky year last year. I mean, he was okay. I mean, he was still probably one of the better offensive tackles in the league, but he's, you're right. He's definitely not $7 million better. Yeah. This is a can't lose deal. In my opinion. I mean, McGarry, if he's just an average right tackle, which he was above average last year over the duration of this contract, it's a bargain. Um, I assume the way that it's structured, it's probably going to be, like you said, Alex, something they can get out of after two years. Um, and it, it leaves flexibility. Uh, like there's, they're not backing themselves into a corner in this draft. They can still take BPA if it's a tackle, um, move, put them at guard, put them at left guard. Now you have a really, really good offensive line. And then, you know, moving to right tackle, move them to left tackle. If, if Jake Matthews, if they move on from him, because his deal – after this year, you can move on from Jake Matthews. I'm not saying they do that, but it, it's an option. And in two years, you can really move on from them. So I think it was fantastic. Now they don't have to go into the draft thinking they need to get a tackle. Uh, they lock up a, a piece of their team that was very good next to Chris, Lind Chris Lindstrom, a huge part of their identity. And now that they can go into the draft saying, hey, whoever the best player on the board is, we can take, whether that's a tackle, whether that's a corner like Christian Gonzalez, whether that's a... Uh, B. John Robinson, for God's sake. I mean, they really have, you know, or, or quarterback. I mean, they're, it, it really leaves themselves flexible for April, which I think is the most important part of this deal. Yeah, that's what we talked about on the last show. You don't want to box yourself in. You don't want to say, OK, well, we don't have a right tackle at all. We have to take a right tackle at eight whenever you could go with a better player. And that's that's just a crazy thing that I've always thought that fans say, oh, we have to have this. Well, maybe in the past because the Falcons didn't have any money. Uh, but you never want to be boxed into what you have to pick because you might be giving up somebody even better. You always want to be able to take the best player available on the board. That's what good teams do. That's what the Steelers do. That's what the Ravens do. Historically, good franchises, that's how they draft. The Chiefs do the same thing. 
they pick up these edge rushers like George Karloftis last year, got him with the 32nd pick. They had Frank Clark, you know, they had a couple other edge rushers and he was one of the better guys on their defense that just won a Super Bowl. Yeah, backtracking continuity <clears throat> on an NFL team is important, but it's essential on an offensive line. Uh, you know, it's five guys working as one unit. Um, it's not, you know, five indi- individual guys. And Chris Lindstrom and Caleb McGarry, you know, built some real chemistry on that right side. They were one of the best blocking tandems in the run game in the NFL last year. So, you know, to keep that going for an- at least uh, for another year, two, maybe even three, uh, is great news for the Falcons. Yeah, and uh, sticking with the draft, I mean, I personally want a quarterback because I like some of the quarterbacks in this draft, and I don't think Desmond Ritter is the long-term answer if you're trying to win a Super Bowl. So that would be my number one. But I'm also really excited about the possibility of drafting one of those tackles, kicking them into guard, having the future of the offensive line established, or getting a Christian Gonzalez. Like Both of those things now really excite me if one of those is available because now you have, like we said, an identity. Um, whether it's a mauling offensive line or a very good secondary, like there's something to really build around in Atlanta at those two position groups. Um, but we'll see how they approach it. But I, it, it makes the draft super exciting for me. Super, And it was, already was exciting when you're picking eighth. Now I'm really excited to see who they get in the draft. Yeah. And it's funny because we talk about not boxing ourselves in and a lot of fans won't want to hear this, but uh, might be a receiver. <laughs> that's really probably the biggest hole that they got left. Uh, edge rushers up there. I don't know if there's really any that's going to be worth taking there at eight. You could always trade back, but I, you could say the same for receivers. I don't know if there's really anybody worth taking with the eighth pick, but it's definitely an option. I mean, outside of Drake London, that room is barren. Uh, I know they like to use their tight ends. I know they got Johnny Smith and they still got Kyle Pitts, but I don't think receivers totally out of the question. You could probably do that in the second or third round, but they're still going to have to add to that room. That's probably the biggest hole that's left. Yeah, I think that everything is on the table. You know, we've all said it several times. Even Dijon. I think everything is on the table. I'll take one, Dijon. One of those tackles, you know, Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones, um, Skrokronsky, uh, any of the cornerbacks, um, Bijan Robinson, any of the quarterbacks, uh, you know, I just named 15 prospects right there. I mean, I would I would be excited about any of those guys. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm totally not opposed to really anything as long as it's the best player on the board, you know, and I know that's easier said than done, but that's really what you got to go with. And people who say they don't want Bijan Robinson, I understand you say, oh, it's a running back, running back. If you watched him play, you know. Especially they, won't, a- they won't want him. They won't want him until they see him. And then when they see him play, they'll be like, all right, I got to order my Bijan jersey. Like, that's yeah. what will happen. Especially in Arthur Smith's offense. I mean, just yeah, look he, at he could be an MVP. Do. He could be an MVP. Yeah. I mean, the way we run the ball, the amount of times we run the ball, I mean, he would be an absolute superstar. And I love Algier, but, I mean, it's not even comparable. Yeah, Bijan could be Todd Gurley. You know, when Todd Gurley was coming out of Georgia and he was – what he had like 20 touchdowns in that Rams offense or something like that. Something crazy. Uh, He could be that kind of guy. He could, you know, they wouldn't do it. They do a running back by committee, but if they did something like Derek, like they did with Derek Henry in Tennessee, uh, it's not out of the question that B. John Robinson could be uh, MVP rookie year. And nobody's done that since Jim Brown. So that's the kind of ceiling this kid has. I mean, he's unbelievable. He's undoubtedly, a top eight prospect in this draft, in my opinion. Uh, the Falcons might not see it that way, but. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I would love to have Bijan on this team, but really looking forward to draft day. Uh, a lot of exciting prospects. Um, it, it's going to be fun. And the rest of this off season, there's, there's a lot of free agents still available. Still got money to spend. Um, still got money to spend. So we're not done yet. We're just really getting started. It's only been a few days.